What's happening? This is Kid Funk, and I am here in London at the Defected headquarters. We are representing uh, South African or African electronic music, and uh, we've got a couple of ex experts on the panel today um, that we're going to be chatting about the growth of African music in the world. We've got uh, Seth, who is a and uh, Sondela Records, which is a division sister label of Defected. Yep, that's right. That's correct. In the house, we have Kitty, who's DJ, producer, and writer all about African electronic music. Uh, we have the superstar, the legend, <laughs> Jeff. First time meeting Jeff. Uh, so good to have you on the panel. And uh, we have Vanko from South Africa. And of course, myself, Kid Funk. Um, so let's get the conversation started. I think m my first thing is um, why we're here. I'm from South Africa. Uh, Vanco's from South Africa. We have Portugal. And we're in your hometown, That's London. Right. Yeah. Tell us the agenda. What's happening, Seth? Uh, the agenda is just to you know open up the floor for conversation about uh, the music that um, all of us here today are quite passionate about. Um, we don't only just want to do the gig, which we're going to talk about a bit later on Saturday and uh, just move it on. We want to uh, be able to promote more of what people are doing within the space, whether it be writing, a and in, producing music, being a label um, boss and just probably, uh, you know, dipping a little bit further into how people feel about the growth of their careers and the music in general. So it's just opening up the floor of the conversation. I, I think coming from... A South African. I've been in South Africa for 38 years. I, I'm, my, my roots are firm in, in the South African music scene. I run my own label. I have a, a weekly radio show. Um, I've worked for one of the biggest house labels, almost uh, the defected of South Africa, uh, Soul Candy, before I started my own label. And, and one of the things that I've noticed in my career spanning over 20 years in South Africa is how passionate South African people are about house music and how we have continuously tried to imitate uh, house artists from around the world, whether it be at jazz or Louis Vega or Kenny Dope. Or we've, we've held these people in such high regard. And I think we're at a space now where we are being taken seriously and we are the people at the forefront uh, would I be right in saying that's why labels like Sondela exist? Because we are now right at the, the on top of the game in regards to the house music space uh, across the world. Absolutely, I do agree with that. And I think with all the other labels that have been operating for, for many years as well, so because Sondela is quite a, a new label, but you know, there's so many uh, record labels like Jeff has got his record label. You know, you've got Fomp Records, for example, you've got DM Recorders, Aluka Records, amongst many other labels have been working so hard. And now now is the time for everyone to start flourishing. So, as you say, yeah, well, well so the, the, the one thing I've noticed is um, a lot of the UK house labels that we all grew up with in South Africa are starting to pick up South African artists. So, the likes of FKA Mash is releasing on HS Record Company or Jumpsters picking up Dawson. And, and it just feels like we're, we're just about to start flying. Um, to get a little bit off the South African uh, music topic, Jeff, tell us a, a little bit more about your label, your involvement in the African electronic dance scene. Hello, guys. <laughs> I'm Jeff. Uh, my label is Kazukuta. Records is already 10 years now. We are doing 10 years this year. So yeah, we just, in the beginning, I started like the way I want to put my music out, but already um, with the, the, the thing in mind that I want to push some of the young kids from Angola to the world. So I was already signing on labels like Nulu, uh, Vega Records, Offering from Body, uh, Tribe from Zephyr Insane. But at a certain point, I was like, okay, so why not to create my own label and try to release my music? But at the same time, some of these young kids, they don't know who is Louis Vega, for example. But they know who is Jeff or Black Coffee because they are more close because uh, of the sounds. So it was the way how I started. 
Okay. So, so um, you've been in the game for many, many years, and I think yeah. you've connected the dots on a global scale uh, where you can get booked in different countries. Yeah. For, for someone watching this, let's say from South Africa, who really wants to be in your position or in Vanco's position and push outwards from their country, is there any tips you could give them uh, in regards to growing your brand? Because I know a lot of kids in South Africa, um, we don't have the same sort of infrastructure like Europe or maybe Angola or Portugal uh, that supports the arts. Uh, is there any tips or, or personal things that you could advise on, on growing your brand and, and making sure that people are aware of you outside of your territory? Yeah, for me, I think is everything about the music. We know exactly uh, um, the industry changed, or maybe it was always like this, but for me, it was always everything about the music. But right now, of course, the image is important. Um, you need to stay focused, like be professional, and unfortunately, uh, I know as African people, we on that point we are a little bit like always trying to make go around the things, but we need to stay focused. Uh, uh, yeah, I think it's just that, just that, and try to um, express what we feel on the music. Every track we do, try to show always something different that can make the people excited and try to listen what we have to, to show. Yeah, I 100% agree with you. I, I get uh, our own state sounds in South Africa and I'm constantly getting asked like, what does it take to be signed to state true sounds? Or what, uh, I have a radio show, what does it take to be on Selective Styles? And I think your answers, you know, hit it on the head. That's exactly it. It starts with the music and everything else kind of grows from there. And if you make incredible music, people will notice you. And I think if people are not noticing you, you need to go back into studio until people do notice you. You need to keep honing your craft. Which brings us to Sir Vanko. Vanko from South Africa, Johannesburg, um, my, my, my city. You've been doing it for, for a long time. I know yeah. uh, you and I have uh, crossed paths many times. You've been knocking on my door. Yes, um, but you're doing amazing things. Thank you, you are collaborating with some heavy hitters. Uh, new single with Black Motion. <laughs> Apparently he's got a double album coming out with Jeff. Um, Quadri. You know? Hey, yeah. things happen in London. But tell us a little bit about your story. Tell us a little bit about um, what you feel it's like being a South African and now starting to get the platform outside Man. and represent what we do. Okay. Um, so my story, uh, it's like, I used to be like, um, I, I used to study something else, which is like um, construction. This is back in college days. So um, I met a lot of music lovers during that time. And um, that's when I met Cuba <coughs> through a friend. Legend. Yeah. Legend. And, uh, um, uh, Cuba got signed to Defected. Yeah. Where we're sitting right now. Hello, Big right. deal, man. So, um, so I would bunk classes uh, from my varsity. And I would come to So Candy. And then I'd see Ellen. I'd, I'd see you. Who's Ellen? You, Who's Kid Funk. That's right. <laughs> Great. So um, that's where my story starts. Bunking classes in college and then coming to Soul Candy, meeting people like uh, Kid Funk, um, Cuba. So I was just basically learning from, from you guys then. And then I finished college. I worked. And then all the time, oh, oh, during this time, I was just learning the whole in music industry and being around people like Cuba, DJ Clock. And um, yeah, and then you fast forward it. And then I dropped my first song in 2015 under my independent label with a friend. And then at that time, I didn't know the impact of track source, Beatport, and all these other platforms. So the song went number one for like a week. The f my first single, No Marketing, that thing. So number one in the Afro House charts. In the, uh, in the Afro House charts. Correct. Opened <laughs> all the doors. Yes, but the thing is, I didn't understand what that meant at that time. And then uh, it was like an eye-opener that maybe there's something special that I'm doing. And then you fast forward to a couple of years. Uh, 
years later, I kept I kept doing because uh, I got motivated and inspired. And then I met people like Bodhisattva uh, because of that song. So it so it so it made uh, me connect to people like Bodhisattva, Oshunlade, Martin Edges, Rocco, Manu, and then eventually Bodhisattva introduced me to my brother Jeff. Uh, years later, and then I, I learned a lot from 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 Jeff, you know, and still learning a lot from 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 him. So basically, like bouncing off ideas through Jeff, um, Bodhisattva, and Cuba, and the whole uh, other other South African uh, DJs, and um, fast forward to now, you know, and um, so much has happened. The sound has grown itself. The time I, I used to be a consumer. And the time I started being the artist, sure. making my art, creating art, and to now, so Afro House, I feel like has evolved as a whole. I wouldn't say Afro House as, as such, but house music in general has grown over time. And, and do you think, uh, I've got two questions. Yeah. The, the first one, hopefully will help me get into the second one. But the first one is, I mean, we've all been around this space whether it's house, deep house, Afro house. When do you think Afro house started? When was the change from tribal house to Afro house? Because this has been coming up a lot for me on my trip in Europe. And I, when I was working at Soul Candy, we were licensing a lot of tribal house. Um, there was a lot of guys, all the guys that you mentioned, which actually sparked th th yeah. this uh, question. When 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 was the shift, and who was the person that pioneered uh, Afro Afro tech, and in a s changed tribal to to this new style? Maybe you can teach me because this is something I I, I know there was a shift. Yeah, yeah, that's an interesting question. I I don't think there is an individual I can say helped tilt it towards Afro House. But I think once Innovisions took interest in Kulo, that EP kind of brought it into a different direction. Right yes, that's right. Um, yeah, I felt like that's when the European market helped bring that interest that shaped the elements of where Afro House has gone over time. Um, hence why we have seen the European market then take on more of the Afro tech sound because it is quite hard hitting and what they're used to over this side of the water. That's what I feel. A, a little bit more electronic. I mm -hmm. mean, I, I, the the early Kulo releases, they, they weren't necessarily Afro tech no. where they wouldn't like shake a floor on the on the kick, mm. but they were very very electronic. Yeah. So uh, I think you've answered my question. You're welcome. Well done. Yep. Ten <laughs> marks for kids. <laughs> Thank just you. A, just a something. We yeah, cannot please. forget Onshuladi as well. Yes, because definitely. Because on that time, Onshuladi was doing already something really different. Mm -hmm. And this type sounds like a, even something a little bit more experimental, yeah. if I can say. So Kulo was doing, but Onshuladi, in this type of sound we are doing now, was there as well. But uh, I kind of feel like Onshuladi came from that uh, tribal house era, you know? For, for uh, debate. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just my, I, I feel like it's really evolved. I, I, I feel like um, the sound where we are now, especially talking from an Afro house perspective, is very driven to a European market. I see a lot of guys back home writing music, which feels like it could work in European settings. I mean, Afro house or didn't really have like many um, builds in it or drops. And now it kind of, it's club music yes. and, and, and we are here. Um, Seth, tell us a little bit about how important it is to have a label based in the middle of Europe that represents and licenses music from Africa. Yeah, I think it's um, it's been a very important part of a lot of the acts being recognized you know in different parts of the world from the previous labels that i spoke spoke about uh talk about um sondela and me being part of sondela is, i think it's it's a more of a, um, a dj's perspective coming into record labels so i've done my kind of 
dues in being a DJ and collecting music from these other labels and um, kind of visualizing what I would put out or not put out or like and do not like and then having that opportunity to then come in and, and do it but having all those years and maybe um, other uh, labels might have not had as much um, club experience so I think that's probably maybe the only difference between like the, those labels and probably like me coming into something like Sondella but it is definitely important in terms of spreading it out across like especially the UK at the moment yeah you, you've got a powerhouse behind you I mean You've got the mighty defected. <laughs> yeah. You've got the machine um, now working this label that's focused on African Afro house. I think that's the agenda. Yeah, more like Afro Af African influence music. So it can still come from someone that's based in Europe or based in America or based anywhere in the world, really. A hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And and it feels like you guys are are starting. It feels like um, you have a big vision ahead of you. Um, how's that going? How are people receiving? Because now you're essentially in this network that's already built. Yeah. And now you're throwing something that's very new uh, at this audience. How are people responding to the Sondela vision and sound? Yeah, they're receiving it very well, actually. It's really, really positive, I think. Um, channels like the Sondela radio is helping. And it's not just about Sondela releases. It's about other releases coming on other labels as well, you know, other artists is exposing the whole, the 360 of the sound. So it's not just Afro House, but it could be Deep House from your label. It could be a little bit more upbeat from Jeff's label. It could be something a bit down tempo, like I'm a piano, you know, or something more um, deep, like a jazz well. So just exposing those sounds and exposing names has really helped. And things like today is, is helping as well for people to kind of just get to grips with with what's going on and how people are feeling about um, the sound, I guess. Would 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 Sondela ever release any I'm a piano? They never say oh never. Oh, that's a saucy ne question. <laughs> <laughs> never say never say never. But I've always felt um, that with I'm a piano, it's just a sound which is so local and so like entrenched over in SA that I don't personally have like a like a strategy. Yes. And I really need to understand the strategy and the business and talk to people that are within it to really understand and also be ahead of the curve. I mean, I had a conversation with someone the other day and it's like, would I be able to get that new hot I'm a piano song before everyone else has it? Someone from England having it. I'm not too sure that something like that would happen and I would have to be very well connected like I am in the Afro house scene. I totally. can't get in the head of the curve in the Afro house scene, but in... I'm a pianist a little bit. I, I think the piano thing is, is taking the world by storm, and I still think there's a lot that's going to happen. Yeah. I think it's going to blow up. I, in South Africa, from my perspective, it's, it's uh, I'm sure Vanko agrees, it's so big that it's pop music. So guys that are in the underground don't touch it. But when we travel, everyone that's in the underground is so onto it because it's so underground overseas, and we're like... This is this is like the Spice Girls back home. It's it's totally totally different, but it's really interesting to see. And and one of the the, the things that I mean, uh, we should be proud of as South Africans is the amount of genres that we can just knock out. I mean, from gom to piano, to kwaito to there's so many things that just get created in South Africa and then go out to the world. Um, I just think that's an amazing thing. Sondela is going to only strictly be Afro House. I wouldn't say strictly. Yeah. But we we do have plans to kind of just develop um, maybe different sounds. So if we're getting deep house sounds, we may like have an offshoot label to, you know, bring that along because I, I'm so passionate about, you know, exposing as much names. So it's not just about the underground, but, you know, established names. So, you know, the last two releases um, that we've had is uh, from Vanco and then our next release that's coming out. Uh, next week is from Jeff and we would call them more established artists where maybe some of the other ones like Fanzo is not an established artist so we want to kind of balance both really uh, but which I'm just passionate about just exposing as much of the music as possible you're you're passionate about South African house music oh yeah I've been uh, yeah, across lot, every shade but just just but music from Africa yeah. you know because you know it, it goes back to you know my early upbringings and then as becoming an adult, appreciating where I'm actually from, you know, I'm from Tanzania and just growing up, you know, there's this image that we used to have 
of certain things that we see on TV and maybe we might not want to go home. But as you go home as an adult, you go and you start to actually feel, you know, your your ancestry actually come within you. So when I was um, discovering Afro house music, um, I, you know, I connected with it. I'm an African man, promote this stuff, you know, really push it, go, go all the way. So yeah. tell me how important uh, Saturday Night's gig is for, for everyone. Cause I think, you know, I, I, I was born in Scotland. Uh, my parents moved to South Africa when I was four and I've been involved in, in the South African electronic scene since I can remember. And now, as I said earlier, South Africans being, or Africa, uh, the music that we're involved in is, is really getting taken seriously on a global level. And thank goodness for the likes of Sondela and Defected uh, for, for really kind of pushing the, the agenda, pushing the issue, and, and hosting uh, uh, an evening where you've got people that aren't necessarily big in this territory, but you're giving us a platform. You're giving Vanco a platform. You know, I'm getting to DJ. Um, Jeff's already you know, got a name here, but we all need these, these big gigs to keep pushing our brands and our, uh, what we're about. How, how important is it for you to take something from another country and bring it to your city and uh, allow us <laughs> to, to, to showcase what we do. I mean, we do things very differently. Yeah. And I think it's important, one of the, the things that I've been having to remind myself of when in Europe is that I need to represent myself. And I think, you know, in Europe, people DJ differently. People play faster, whereas in South Africa, in my space, we play slower. So it's important that I, I don't have to keep up with what's happening here. You guys yeah. brought me for a reason. Yeah, yeah. You yeah, understand. So how important is it for you to be able to to give all of us the this platform on Saturday? It's it's a personal dream for me to be honest. It's like so important for me for uh not only uh music but for talent on the decks to be shown. I think the one thing I've always known about um us in Africa, we've got we've got some talent, a really good talent. So when we when the opportunity comes to book multiple DJs rather than the one DJ. I would just seize it with both hands and say, you know, uh, bring as many people as I can as possible. So it's just fulfilling a dream. I'd, I actually never thought this would happen, but I'm just thankful for the chance to make hey, it we're all thankful. It. We're all sitting here because <laughs> of you, man. Respect. <laughs> but like, um, yeah, it's just important to just bring people together. So with the, the lineup on Saturdays of bringing a mix of deep house like yourself you know um uk's afro house take pure sa house from from vanco live performance from uh black motion uh the couple's kind of like etro electronic kind of hybrid afro tech yeah. and then jeff sound as well which is you know the, the that kind of portuguese angolan sound and just bringing a whole mix for those who who come through who know about it or want to discover it they've just got a perfect kind of melting pot of a, of, of a of a night. Well, you know, shout outs so to you, man, well, for for putting it'll be good this. To know, it'll be good to know how, how you know what the gig means to 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 you guys as well. I'm, no. I'm just revved up. There was just something I want before we get into that. Something me and Jeff were discussing briefly before we we all sat down, which I think is really important. Um, coming from such a, a house crazy nation like South Africa. We've all been raised to see DJing quite seriously and. We all look up to Black Coffee and, and you know, he's a master when it comes to uh, being a DJ and presentation and locking in a mix. And I, I, I've always found, and this could be insulting for, for other countries, but th they're not as serious. Uh, I find South Africans are very, very serious because of who we have to look up to when it comes to DJing and you can't, we've had many people come to South Africa and uh, as, as big names or producers and, and can't mix well or, or don't understand how the tempo works uh, for certain situations. And uh, I, I, I think it's a, it's a very, very important thing in South Africa to make sure that A, you can DJ, B, you can tell a story, uh, and three, you can you know, be able to work a crowd on your own terms 
Now, Jeff was telling me earlier, and I had no idea because I'm just coming from a South African perspective, that it is exactly the same as maybe even more important in Portugal. Tell me what's happening from a DJ perspective from uh, your scene. Yeah, the conversation came because Vanko was there like <laughs> a few days ago and he said it was a little bit, uh, how you say? It was a nice night, yeah. but a bit challenging. But um, So you, pr you played in Portugal, right? Yeah, but I've played in Portugal twice. So at least um, I have a bit of some, you know, some tips and experience. Yeah, but uh, my point was just to say that um, Europe as a whole, coming from South Africa, we have this notion that coming to Europe, um, you need to play electronic music, it's Afrotech. And then you think you have it figured out until you actually land here and you actually start experiencing different countries. In my opinion, I think Portugal is, is a different scene. They have a different rhythm to music. And so my point was just to say, thank you. I, I was just thanking him for the tips that, <laughs> oh that you always <laughs> give me. Well, what were the tips? I need to know. So Jeff always says, uh, you got to do what you got to do. And then it's like, but make sure you play this kind of songs. They like this kind of songs. Check out what I'm doing. Then I'm like, OK, cool stuff, bro. I will check. But they like, um, is it Kuduru? Could I say Kuduru? Or like hard hitting drums, yeah. fast paced. It's fast paced, the tempo. And it's hard hitting drums, not very like soft drums, because I feel like in uh, in South Africa we very we like slow tempo. Hey, bro, I'm getting no bookings in Portugal, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. But yeah, but it's a different dynamics when you coming from South Africa with the well. I I, I don't want to say that we all think like that, but every person has. Uh, something before you get to another place like maybe sure. it's gonna look like that sure. like a certain perception and stuff yeah but basically portugal is quite interesting fast paced but t but tell me going back to what i was saying from a technical point of view with djing in south africa we're very serious we are very serious it's no it's it's you, you cannot fumble you, you need you to uh, and it sounds like portugal it's the same even more serious because even more serious because i didn't think that was possible that's amazing yeah. because it's fast paced tempo and it's quick so if you fumble because it's too quick oh wow and people are in the mood uh, pe people are in the mo uh, people are in motion yeah so if you fumble it's gonna sound how, how fast are you playing in portugal what's the tempo like tempo is important because it's like 125 125 okay. it depends of the the party it sure. depends of the time of the night of course but at the same time even with all of that you need at the same time to do the journey of right. the party very important um, because when i started i w used to play like kind of all night so i was raising the dj for few years and I did like a lot of long gigs. So you would warm up for yourself? Yes. And take then you'd be the main the DJ. Time. And then, and yeah, then right. you know, so nowadays, every time I go to play in Portugal, I play like, for example, like five hours, six hours or something like that. And the people needs to be always on point. Sometimes sure. you can go down a little bit, go like kind of almost like slow. But after a while, you need to go a little bit more harder. Yeah. Even if you need to go to techno, but yeah. something a little bit more melodic or something. Uh, so you need to, to do the journey. So Portugal, you have like a, a lot of different crowds and they like to to have the journey. Basically For sure. Is that. Yeah. The one thing that uh, I also wanted to, to talk, talk about because it's important to me and important to the scene that I represent in South Africa is tempo. Um, in South Africa, w we could, in my space, which is the Deep House space and, and the record label that I run, Stay True Sounds, we put out music, anywhere between 113 BPM and you know maximum 120 BPM. And we play in spaces around the country and we don't really go past 118. And it's very different to come to a space where you need to be a little bit quicker. And I think that just comes down to what works in different areas. Uh, is tempo a thing outside of South Africa? Because I know when we book someone that's really big overseas to come and play in our space. You know, we had Black Loops and he's on that 125 tip at a, a party called Deep Town and everyone's like, bruv, you, you gotta slow it down, man. This is not our language. 
is, is tempo uh, a, 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 an important thing? Obviously, for you, you 125 is, is, is where you work best. For 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 you guys, is t I mean, is is tempo a, a big thing in the yeah, UK? Yeah, for sure, it is. It is. Um, tempo is a bit of an interesting one in the UK because Afro house tempos between each DJ, each DJ, there's a different tempo that they tell their story for. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, for myself and Seth, we are between the 118, 122. If if people are really on it, then we go one, two, three, maybe, but I'm definitely pressing master tempo at that point. So yeah, 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 yeah. it's interesting to see how the tempo does differ because even when I played in South Africa in 2019, I brought it all the way down from getting tips from Seth saying, yeah, they like their things slower. Um, and I, I have noticed even with genres as well, and piano, is a big tempo discussion at the moment so in the UK. So 110, yeah, 105 well to 114. Well, it's meant to be, but how it's treated in the UK oh is really? a completely oh, that's, different that's thing. Oh, disrespectful. Hey, oh, I, I'll pass over to Seth at this point. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't do that, kid. <laughs> no, it has been a thing, but I think it's just um, because of what we're used to in the UK that uh, the Amma Piano Sounds was played at a faster tempo than what it was supposed to okay that so makes sense though it, it does but I, I suppose if it was pressed on vinyl and uh, was uh, was uh, done 45 yeah. or was done on 33 you could be doing on 45 yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah it, it, it has it has big it has become an issue but um with uh, this summer and the acts coming over i think there's been more of a clear understanding of where actually where it, where it needs to be but i was um we was always afraid that we don't want the music which is good music to be presented in the wrong way so when people do go and look for it on your uh, digital platforms or youtube that they discovered oh actually it sounds like this and they can't adjust so um we're just glad well i'm personally glad that it's kind of like leveled off a little it's bit. it's uh it's so mad uh black coffee when he had his residency in ibiza he was really helping bring up djs from south africa and give them a platform you know at, at his evening and you know i, I was apparently going to come just before lockdown came on oh bro <laughs> soon um <laughs> And the, the biggest topic of conversation for the guys that went or had been was tempo. They would always come back and be like, yo, kid, like, you're going to have to take it to 122, 123 at least. Um, and for me, I think it's cool if you're still playing what you play. It just needs to be a little bit quicker. But uh, I definitely felt uh, I did a, a stream for uh, Rince France last night, and I played how I played, and I saw people's reaction, and I even felt like I was a bit too slow. Wow. But when you go to South Africa, I think it's just about the situation. You know what I mean? More about the, what about this, this discussion of like the record choice? Maybe sometimes it's the record choice rather than the tempo, because when I uh, play in some spaces and I just play at 118 or one. 19 i just maybe change the record that records i want to play so maybe tracks which are busy at that which may then sound like it's at one two two one two three was actually slow but because they're busier and it, things are happening i can still kind of work it so it's, it maybe it's how you tell the story within yeah. your tempo and, and learning that yeah it's just so uh, I, I think I, I need to adapt to Europe, or yep. or Europe needs to adapt to me. I think. It I think, be I think yeah, to we'll you. work it out. Yeah. We'll work it out. <laughs> Is there anything else you guys want to talk about? I think like I've hit the 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 discussion points that I've had. Is there anything you want to say before we shut off? How do we feel? Yeah, how do you feel? You how do you, I feel? Yeah, you said that you, you're just happy to be I'm here. I'm just, yeah, I'm <laughs> just, I'm, I'm amped. And that took us to a whole discussion about tempo and, and, and whatnot. How, how are you feeling about Saturday, Vanko? Um, I feel, man, I'm so excited for Saturday. And I'm grateful to be here, honestly. And uh, big ups to the defected team, Sundela team. Yeah, for me, I think it's going to be special because my favorite DJ was uh, Eric Murillo. And the first time I went to Ministry of Sound was to see him. Like oh my wow. first and the only one. This is like full one. circle for you. You know, so now, like I grew up and after a few years, I have the chance 
at the same time to go and play my music on Ministry of Sound, you know? So for me, it's like something really special. So I want to, I'm grateful for Sunderland, the fact that, of course, and for sure it's going to be something special. Amazing. Um, I am still trying to find the words for Saturday. The reason why is because I feel Saturday gives an opportunity to, for us to rewrite the narrative of house music. And I think it's very powerful to do it in a space like Ministry of Sound, where Ministry of Sound has for a very long time been the pinnacle of electronic music. People have looked at Ministry as a label, as a club space, as the be or an end of electronic music and the fact that Defected have given us this platform to use that powerful space um, to draw attention to the likes of ourselves but most importantly to the music itself um, the story that drives that music as well I think is a very powerful thing so I'm still trying to figure out how I feel about Saturday. It's <laughs> definitely positive, uh, but it, it means a lot. It definitely means a lot. And I think it is um, a great time to be alive in Afro House music, I would say. I think, I think we've been waiting. I feel like I've been waiting for the past two and a half years, you know, since this global lockdown, to just be able to travel, A, but B, to come play at the legendary Ministry of yeah, Sign is going to sure. be quite special. And to be able to do it on our terms. For sure. Shout out to Sondela. Sure. So thank you, Defected. Thank you, Sondela. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now I wanted to go back to uh, a question that you um, were were asking about. You know, the period between the Afro tribal and uh, the Afro tech side. And um, there was a, there's an artist I wanted to mention, uh, Benny T from Yes Botswana, who I think was kind of already getting into that space quite early if we if you go back into like you know stuff like pieces of my mind the sobs remix um that he made um if you listen to some of his music he was kind of telling it and i don't uh, i would love to know why you know maybe it's because he was in botswana on his own he weren't really going elsewhere and he was just creating his own influence it's uh, quite interesting but i also wanted to to say that i think there was a period between I want to say 2000, maybe 12, 2015, where there was this period where SA weren't really too sure about the music they were con like constructing um, and had to learn a lot, relearn. So while it was raw between 2008, maybe 2012, they had to go back and relearn and get more influences. And once people started traveling outside of the country, that's when you get new kind of sounds and new kind of uh, takes on on the music, you know, kind of similar to like Af what Afrobeats kind of experience. And I think collaborations also helped. Key. Yeah, once collaboration and sharing of ideas. So say Vanko and Jeff heard on your album, you kind of shared ideas to develop that album to where it where it came out. That's a, that's a key thing, you know sharing ideas rather than just being, you know, kind of just within your zone and headspace. My last question is the one I love asking um, because I'm so entrenched in the South African electronic landscape and, and <laughs> Africa included. Um, but I feel like it's a very important time for underground producers in Africa right now. Kind of all eyes are on us. Um, from a global sense, I feel like there's a lot of people who are waving our flag. Um, but I also feel like there's a lot of people that are not getting the love that they need. And, um, you know, I help where I can. And I'm sure Jeff does too with his label. You guys are doing it with Sandela. But my question is, who are we sleeping on from Africa? Which producer, not DJ, producer, do you think would be or should be the next thing uh, Globally, you can start. It's a, it's a tough one. <laughs> it's a tough one, but I just think just because of um, his unique styles, FKA Mash. I knew it. I knew it. Who do I say after that? <laughs> wow. Um, Benny T. 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 Shut up. Yes, he he is definitely influencing the music in a very interesting, unique. Um, yeah, oh yeah. 
So I think he's heavily slept on. No, I totally agree. But I also think that Mash is journey has just started. Mm. I, I very much feel like he w is where FKA Mash was maybe two years mm. ago, and mm. and he knows it. He knows he's going to be big. Yeah, for sure. and he's taking his time and mastering his craft. But definitely yeah. one one no, to I look agree. out for, Jeff. It's a, it's a hard question because they said already like <laughs> 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 the first name was the one I was about to say. But FKA Mash. Of course, I, yeah, I, need, he's to, a I need to defend my flag and I, I will say homeboys from uh, Kazukuta, <laughs> Angola. Uh, they are doing a, a really good job. They have a lot of uh, Afro House hits. Okay. Um, and I think the world don't know who they are. They know their music, but they don't know who they are. They are two twins from Angola, wow. and they are just there. But their music, even in, I don't know, like uh, Nike promotions and oh stuff wow. like that, like, like really big things, but they are just there. I need to get on your promo list. No problem. No, you go. <laughs> I got you, man. I got you. <laughs> so I will say homeboys from Angola for sure. Okay. Yeah. Vanko, I can see you've been thinking about this one <laughs> since Seth <laughs> answered. It's, al it's always nice sitting here. Yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I would go with Kasango. Kasango is amazing, yeah? A reason why I would say Kasango, it's um, looking at his journey. The guy only has one solo song, solo track. Uh, we're not talking about collabora uh, right, collaboration. Right, right, right. And I think it's close to about a million streams. So uh, so he's the guy that worked with Zex uh, on Osama, right? Yes. Yeah. And in my own opinion, uh, our journeys are different as artists. There's ones that need to create so much to get to a certain level. And there are those artists that only need one song that will do so much, and it's fine. And I think Kasang was someone that is that guy he just drops one song game over game over he did one night featuring jamie fox a smash uh he's done uh the current hot song i would say globally uh with zix between osama and uh an amazing collaboration with uh jeff uh don't let me go look man I, uh, yeah yeah uh, let you go yeah kasang was mommy and I, obviously, I've got to have my five cents, but I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say th there's so many I could say. <laughs> it's ridiculous, but I, I think uh, I think the world needs to look out for Hyperphonic. Hyperphonic is is he's just finished his studies, and uh, I've got an album of his that is just ridiculous. Uh, my label's first Afro House release next year, but he's on point, and I need to give shout out to China Chameleon. I think he's a, a very, very special producer that's also just been doing it for the longest time and is finally like getting the the love, respect and, and financial reward for, for the time and effort that he's put in. So those are my two. And uh, I think that's all my questions. You guys have anything else to say? No, uh, no um, I just thank you guys for coming through. I'm really happy that you're all here. Thanks for the chat and uh, just to kind of dig in that, that little bit more deeper into uh, what we do and how we feel. And I just am um, excited about having more of these conversations, you know, um, and just exploring this, this music further because, you know, the world needs to know about the acts that we've just um, spoken about, the music that we're going to play on Saturday night. And also, you know, uh, us as, as individuals, you know, we... we to the world as they say to the world know, man to, to the world yeah. shout out thank you so shout much out. guys thank you cheers <laughs>